Welcome students to the MOOC's lecture on Fuzzy Sets, Arithmetic and Logic and this is lecture number 26. As I said at the end of the last class that today we shall discuss inferencing with conditional and qualified propositions. We know a conditional proposition is of the form if x is a then y is b and we have seen that if we are given x is a prime which is another fuzzy set then we try to infer about what happens if x is a prime with respect to the variable y. In particular, we try to find a fuzzy set B prime which comes as a consequence of applying if x is A then y is b on x is a prime in conditional and qualified proposition the general form will be if x is a then y is b is f where f is a qualifier for example consider if temperature is cozy then fan speed is moderate is very true. So, here 
x is the antecedent variable and in case of this example, which is temperature. Why is the consequent variable which in this case is fan speed and f is the qualifier and which in our case is very true. And suppose we define cosy as the set 0 0.9 upon 25, where 25 is the temperature in degree of centigrade, 0 0.7 for the temperature 30 and 0 0.4 for the temperature 35 and moderate fan speed is given as 0 0.8 for 120 revolutions and 0 0.4 for 200 revolutions. So, this is my set A and this is my set B and since F is given to be very true. Thus, it is differing from an unqualified proposition and suppose A prime is given to be the fuzzy set 0 0.95 for 25 plus 0 0.8 for 30 plus 0 0.6 for 35. So, this is the problem. We are given that if temperature is cozy, then fan speed is moderate is very true and we need to infer about when it is given that the temperature comes from the set A prime with these memberships. So, we need to incorporate the effect of F, which in our case is very true. With respect to conditional and qualified, the general scheme for solving this problem is called method of truth value restriction. and it works as follows. We 
we look at or we try to find if A is the membership of some element x in A that is mu A of x is equal to A, then how this membership is restricted for A prime. The notation for this is R t A prime by A of A and which is, is equal to supremum over x mu A prime x such that mu A of x is equal to A. That is, if x 1, x 2, x n are n members of A such that mu A x i is equal to A for all i 1 to n, then the restricted truth value of A is equal to maximum over all i mu A prime x i. Note that since it is discrete, we used maximum, otherwise we use supremum. Now, we obtain the truth value under x is a prime as follows. R t of b prime b of b is equal to supremum over all a belonging to 0 1 minimum of r t a prime by a of a and f of implication of a comma b. This is a fairly complicated notation, so let me explain them. Let us recall that for unqualified case, we used mu b prime of y naught is equal to supremum over x 
minimum of mu a prime of x and mu r of x y, where r came from implication. That is mu r of x comma y is equal to implication of mu a of x comma mu b of y. That is since x is a implies y is b, this implication is captured through the function i and when we use Lukasiewicz, it is i a comma b is equal to minimum of 1 and 1 minus a plus b. Under method of truth restriction, we go as follows. We need to calculate for any arbitrary b belonging to 0 1, which denotes mu b of y, how it will change or how it will be restricted when x is equal to a prime. Therefore, the formula is restricted to the value of b as we go to b prime is equal to supremum over all a belonging to 0 1 minimum of restricted truth value of a for a prime for a and the effect of f on the implication a b. So, let me illustrate with an example. So, the problem will be clear. So, consider the problem that I have stated earlier that A is defined like this, when B is defined like this and F is very true, what is going to be the membership values under B prime. So, consider R t of a prime of a for any a. We have only three possible values I mean non zero values in a. 
say for a which are either 0 0.9 or a is equal to 0 0.7 or a is equal to 0 0.4 this we obtained from the set A. Now, how they are going to be restricted? We have to look at A prime. Now, since there is only one element with membership 0.9, we look at its corresponding restriction which is 0.95. In a similar way, the restriction of 0.7 is 0 0.8 and the restriction of 0 0.4 is 0 0.6. So, we have R t A prime of A for 0 0.9 is equal to 0 0.95 R t A prime A of 0 0.7 is equal to 0 0.8 and R t A prime A of 0 0.4 is equal to 0 0.6. Now, we need to compute R t B prime B of B for all B belonging to 0, 1. That is R t B prime by B of B is equal to maximum of minimum of 0 0.95 and f of i 0 0.9 comma b minimum of 0 0.8 and f i 0 0.7 comma b and minimum of 0 0.6 and f i 0 0.4 comma b. So, because the value of y in the new set b prime is going to be b and Therefore, we are looking at what is the implication of when x value in A is 0 0.9 and we want to obtain B similarly for 0 0.7 and B and similarly 0 0.4 and B. In our case, F is very true. And we know mu very true of x is equal to mu true of x square. Therefore, our value for R t B prime B of B is simplified as follows. It is maximum of minimum of 0 0.95 and minimum of 1 square comma 
1 minus 0 0.9 plus b square minimum of 0 0.8 and minimum of 1 square comma 1 minus 0 0.7 plus b square and minimum of 0 0.6 comma minimum of 1 square comma 1 minus 0 0.4 plus b whole square. Now, there is a trick all these are 1 and we know that all these values are less than 1. So, 1 square can never be minimum when compared to this. Therefore, our focus should be only on these values. Therefore, R t b prime b of b is further simplified to maximum of minimum of 0 0.95 and b plus 0 0.1 whole square minimum of 0 0.8 comma b plus 0 0.3 whole square and minimum of 0 0.6 and b plus 0.6 whole square. As you can understand, b plus 1 minus 0 0.9 is b plus 0.1. Similarly, this is b plus 0.3 and this is b plus 0.6. Question is, how to obtain this? So, so, we go as follows, we use a graphical method to solve this problem. And let us have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9 and say 1. And let us draw the three lines corresponding to 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 0.95. So, let us assume this is 0 0.6, this is 0 0.8 and this is 0 0.95. Now, consider the three equations b plus 0 0.6 whole square, b plus 0 0.3 whole square and b plus 0 0.1 whole square. At b is equal to 0, this is going to be the maximum. So, let us start from that and I am comparing b plus 0 0.6 whole square with this line 0 0.6 because we need to find out minimum of b plus 0 0.6 whole square and 0 0.6. We obtain that they intersect at the point this point what is 0 0.17 5, if you calculate, you will find that therefore, till the point 0 to 0 0.175, b 
plus 0 0.6 whole square is minimum is lesser than 0 0.6. After that, this line is going to be the minimum because this is going to cross 0 0.6. So, we can get this point. Let us now consider B plus 0 0.3 whole square and it starts from somewhere here and it intersects the line 0 0.6 at a point 0.475. This you can get if you solve the equations and therefore, it comes at this point. Therefore, during this interval 0 0.6 will give us maximum because all these values are lower than 0 0.6. However, it crosses the line 0 0.8 at a point 0.595. After that, it becomes more than 0.8, but since we are comparing B plus 0.3 whole square with 0 0.8 and taking the minimum. Therefore, we do not need to look at this point, we know after that the value is going to be this that is 0 0.8. Now, let us look at the equation B plus 0 0.1 whole square, it starts from something very close to 0, it crosses the line 0 0.8 at the point 0.795. So, we get a curve like this till this point therefore, this is going to be the maximum, but after that it goes above 0 0.8 and it cuts the line 0 0.95 at a point 0 0.875. After that of course, this maximum is going to be given by 0 0.95. So, this way we can get different intervals in which different equations will serve as the maximum and we can summarize this in the following way R t b prime b of b is equal to B plus 0 0.6 whole square for B belonging to 0 comma 0.175. This is, is equal to 0 0.6 for B belonging to 0.175 to 0.475. This is to be governed by B plus 0 0.3 whole square for B belonging to 0.475 to 0.595 and this will be governed by the line 0 
for B belonging to 0.595 to 0.795 and this is going to be governed by B plus 0.1 whole square for B belonging to 0.795 to 0.875 and this is going to be 0 0.95 for B belonging to 0.875 to 1. So, this allows us to obtain mu b prime of b for all values of b. Now, we had b is equal to 0 0.8 for 120 and 0 0.4 for 200. Question is what is mu b prime of 120? We see that we see that b belonging to this interval, the restricted value becomes b plus 0 0.1 whole square. Therefore, 0 0.8 will be restricted to 0 0.8 plus 0 0.1 whole square is equal to 0 0.9 whole square is equal to 0 0.81. Similarly, RT B prime B of 0 0.4 is equal to from this equation, we get 0 0.4 belongs to this interval. Therefore, this is going to be 0 0.6. Therefore, the conclusion is that the B prime set is 0 0.81 for 120 revolutions and it is 0 0.6 for 200 revolutions. Like that, we could infer about the consequent variable with the help of the given implication and that the input is x is a prime. Okay? So, this is how we infer about conditional and qualified propositions. Next, we want to study fuzzy quantifiers. If you remember, we started that when we have propositional logic, we have expanded it in two directions. One is multi-valued logic. which we have been using for last few lectures and another way of extending it was through first order predicate logic and that is also contributing to fuzzy. In fact, first order predicate logic gave us one is the concept of variables 
and it has given concept of quantifiers. In particular, we have used two types of quantifier. One is there exist, which is existential quantifier. And the other one is for all, which is universal quantifier. Similarly, when we extend it, to fuzzy logic, we have two types of fuzzy quantifiers. One is called number type or often it is called first kind. That is here we look at some fuzzy numbers say for example, about 10 nearly 100 etcetera. And the second one is proportion type, or second kind, here we look at instead of absolute values, a fuzzy way of describing the proportion say something like almost all close to half nearly one third etcetera. Actually in our daily life we use such fuzzy quantifiers. For example, there are about 10 students in this class with low attendance. Or nearly fifteen hundred people have registered for this course. Or it can be something like close to half of the students are females or say something like almost all students are doing well. in this course. So, we see that we have this is a fuzzy quantifier of first kind, this is another fuzzy quantifier of first kind, this is a 
fuzzy quantifier of second kind and this is also a fuzzy quantifier of second kind. General canonical form is there are q y's in i such that v i is f say for example, consider there are about 10 students in the class such that attendance of i is low. Now, if we compare, we can see that q is the quantifier which is about 10 in this problem. i is the set such that i belonging to i and in our case i is the class and each small i is a student v i is equal to value of variable v for i, which in this case is attendance of i. And finally, f is the fuzzy set defined over v and f is the fuzzy set defined over all values of v. Question is how to obtain the truth values of a proposition P so from the above P we write P prime as follows the number of low attendance students in the class is about 10 that is p prime is the cardinality of low attendance student is about 10 thus in general 
we transform P such that there are Q i is such that V i is equal to F and this we transform to P prime to something like cardinality of V i is F is equal to q and this we do for fuzzy quantifiers of first kind. So, how to solve this problem? Finally, will our aim is to obtain truth value of p and for which we will see if p goes to p prime such that p prime is cardinality of e is equal to q then we shall assign T p is equal to mu q of cardinality of E. So, let me illustrate with an example. There are about 10 students in the class whose attendance is low. So, let us define two fuzzy sets as follows say fuzzy set low attendance is defined over the set 0 to 50 if there are 50 lectures such that anything between 0 to 10 is low and between 10 to 20 it comes like this as a straight line. Therefore, it is a semi trapezoidal fuzzy number and we shall denote it as 0, 0, 10, 20. Above 20, the membership is 0 and the second fuzzy set is about 10 and suppose we define it as follows. At 10 it is 1 and 8 to 12 it gives a triangular fuzzy number. 8, 10 and 12. So, our aim is given a fact what is the truth value of this statement. The fact is as follows. Suppose in a class there are 50 students and 5 of them have attendance less than equal to 10 
2 have attendance 12, 3 have attendance 15, 4 have attendance 17 and 2 have attendance 18, rest all greater than 20. Therefore, we need to compute the cardinality of the set E, where E is low attendance. Students, we know mu low of 10 is equal to 1 and number of student is 5, mu low of 12 is equal to 0 0.8 and number of students is 2, mu low of 15 is equal to 0 0.5 and number of student is 3, mu low of 17 is equal to 0 0.3 and number of student is 4 and mu low of 18 is equal to 0 0.2 and number of student is 2. Therefore, scalar cardinality of E is equal to 5 plus 1.6 plus 1.5 plus 1.2 plus 0.4, which comes out to be 9.7 and mu about 10 of 9.7 is equal to 0 0.85. Therefore, truth value of the statement we can assign to be 0 0.85. Okay, students, I stop here today. In the next class, I shall continue with fuzzy quantifiers and also we shall see how we can infer from quantified propositions. Thank you.